Welcome to another tech video. So today we're going to be looking at this unit here. So this has been gifted to us by one of our really lovely customers. Um, this one is going to go off to be used by a local charity. Um, so what we're going to do today is we're going to, um, first of all, we're going to sort out the internals of it and then we're going to do a factory reset, um, get it ready for handing on to its new home. This unit here is it's an HP ProDesk 405 G4 mini desktop PC, um, as you can see here. So we're going to run through the ports that it comes with and also have a look at the internals um, and clean it up and then get it ready. So let's have a look at the device. So a um, couple of USB high speed USB 3 type A ports on the front. Um, We've got a headphone jack and then we've got a dual head microphone and headphone jack, which is the headset jack. We've got our hard disk LED light. We've got our power light, um, power switch. On the back, we've got two display ports. We've got another couple of USB ports. These are, again, high-speed USB 3 ports. We've got a VGA out. We've got two USB 2 ports and a gigabit uh, network interface. The top we've got our Kensington lock and then our power um, input. So let's get inside the unit itself. So to get inside you undo the little thumb screw on the back of the on the back of the unit here. And then the whole front case slides forward and lifts off like that. And inside uh, there's not a huge amount to look at really so this tray here is for an additional two and a half inch uh, either SATA drive or two and a half inch SSD drive. Uh, on the front we've got our speaker, um, that's pretty much it. And under here is, this is our fan and then we've got our seat heat sink under here. So what we're going to do this morning is we're actually going to remove this assembly and we're going to give the unit a good clean out. So to remove this fan assembly this top section here the fan just lifts up and slides out as you can see here under the heat sink it's uh, it's fairly dirty so we're going to give this a good blowout but first of all we're going to remove the heat sink itself and to actually get this out we've got to remove the tray here so we're going to undo these two screws at the front I'm going to use a magnetic screwdriver just to I'd say try and remove those but uh, we're actually going to use Some couple of long nose pliers just to lift those out. Like so. We're going to leave the fan connected at the moment because that runs all the way back through here. So we're going to see if this will slide forward now and lift out, which it does. Now you've got to be careful because you've got the, um, the SATA connector ribbon cable over there so we're going to just slide that forward lift that up and leave that over the back under here we've got our m.2 drive which is a toshiba 256 gig 2280 drive that sits in the slot there you've got another one under here which is for actually for a wi-fi card so you can't put a can't put a drive in there that's for a, um, a network card network wi-fi card now we've got this out of the way we can just remove the fan assembly and then we've got what looks like three screws holding this in place so we're going to carefully remove this and the reason that we're doing this is we're actually going to re 
apply the thermal paste to it. We're going to clean off the old thermal paste and we're going to reapply some new thermal paste to make sure we've got longevity, maximise the, the life of the unit as much as possible. Okay, that should be it. That should now just lift out of the way. There we go. So we can see we've got our thermal pads here, here, across here. So these are all um, touching the thermal pads. The, yeah, the, the thermal paste is uh, pretty much dried on there. So we're going to clean that up with some isopropyl alcohol. And we're just going to take some, put it on the cloth, and then wipe off the thermal paste that we've got on here. You do want to make sure that you've got windows open when you're using this stuff because it's uh, really smelly. And again. Give this a good clean. There we go. So that's the base of the heat sink cleaned. And now we're going to do the same on the chip. We're just going to wipe off the thermal paste. Okay, so the chip in here is an AMD Ryzen 3 Pro 2200GE. So the G stands for, it got, comes with um, Radeon graphics. I believe it's version, it's probably version 7 on this, uh, this CPU. Once you've finished with the alcohol, you want to take that, get the lid back on as soon as possible. So now you can see that we've got our chip nice and clean, we've got our heat sink nice and clean and we've got eight gig of RAM in here. So all we're gonna do at this point is we're just gonna take a brush and we're gonna give it a light dusting. Make sure that uh, everything is as clean as possible. Give it a little brush on there. Give it a little blow out and the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take our heat sink we're going to take this outside and we're going to just give this a uh, a brush off and dust as well that's in pretty good condition okay so now we have got uh, we're going to be using some arctic thermal paste this is mx2 thermal compounds and you don't need a great deal of this so in our experience, a pea size amount in the centre of the CPU is sufficient. Like that. And then we can reattach everything. So again, our heat sink is going to go back on making sure that the pads are still in place and none of the none of the thermal pads have come off because they're for these parts here we're going to slide being very careful that back under there and we're just going to rest that in place we're going to give it a little wiggle around just to make sure that that reattaches and then we're going to screw down in succession, a couple of turns on each of the mounting screws, two turns, one turn, and one turn. And you want to keep going around until the heat sink won't go down any further. Uh, these screws have got springs on to make sure that you can't over tighten them, but it gives you sufficient pressure on your CPU for adequate cooling. OK, 
Okay, that's that one, that's that one, and that's that one. Okay, so while you've got the fan out, you want to give this a little dust around as well. With a brush is uh, more than adequate. You can use a blower if you want to. Um, we're just going to use the paintbrush just to get in there and give everything a good dust off. And again on this side here, on the underside, just making sure that all the fan blades are free of any built up debris. And give it a little blow out, okay. And now we can run our cable back along underneath here. And we can insert that back into the correct position. There we go, so that clips in. This sits on top of the screws at the front and there's two mounting points at the back and we're going to run our cable underneath there. Okay, so that's that done. And then we're going to take our drive cage and again, we're not using uh, an additional storage device in here. So we're just going to take this and put this back. And that just slides into place there. We're going to take our two screws Use our long nose pliers for this screw, making sure we don't drop it on the main board. There we go. Okay, that's all back in place. And now we're going to take our cover. And we're just going to dust along the inside, make sure that these uh, holes are clean from any debris, giving the unit as much ventilation as it's going to need. And then that goes back on the top. So this comes with eight gig of RAM. Um, useful that it's got the display ports. It's a shame it doesn't come with uh, HDMI output, but um, it is what it is. It comes with two display ports and um, a VGA port, so there should be plenty of connectivity there. Right, so once we've got the machine back together, all we've done is we've gone into our startup menu. Uh, we're gonna go into the BIOS and just double check everything in there. Um, but this is an HP unit, so to get to the boot menu that you see here, or the startup menu that you see here, you wanna hit the escape button repeatedly when you first power on the unit. We're gonna go in and have a look at the going to go in and have a look at the BIOS setup. So that is F10. There we go. We're going to go into system information and we're going to have a look at it. And there we go. We can see that we've got our Ryzen 3 Pro 2200 GE with Radeon graphics, uh, eight gig of RAM, uh, system BIOS, as you can see here. So this is a fairly recent BIOS. That's pretty much it in terms of that screen. Uh, again, we can drill down in and have a look at the cache on the uh, CPU. So it looks like the clock speed 3200 megahertz and that will be boosting up to potentially 4 gigahertz. Uh, memory speed running at 2667 megahertz um, with one RAM slot available, so one 8 gig uh, SODIM slot there. Nothing in there of any interest. TPM embedded security, let's have a look at that. Okay, so this has got a TPM2 chip, so this will quite happily run Windows 11, which is quite good. Okay, that's, that's everything that we needed to see, really. Um, let's go back, and we don't want to save any changes. We're going to say no to that. And then we can go ahead and now factory reset the unit. The first thing you want to do is obviously we're going to log in. 
Now, because this has been used by a local business, we need to do a factory reset. We can ignore all the stuff that we've got installed on this at the moment, which just so happens to be Office 365, and that's pretty much it. So we're gonna go and gonna search for reset, and we wanna click on reset this PC. Okay, there are a number of options, so we're going to choose the basic option. We're going to click on Get Started, and we're going to click on Remove Everything. And then we're going to click on Next. So as you can see here, it's going to remove everything. It's going to remove all the user accounts. It's going to remove... Um, all of the apps and programs and it's going to reset us back to a standard Windows 10 installation. So we're going to click on reset. And once the machine hits 100%, it should reboot. And at this point, it's re reinstalling Windows from the recovery partition that's uh, on the drive. Okay, and that's it. So once you see this screen, uh, Windows is ready to start installing. Now you can run through the installation script for this and get it set up. However, uh, because this is being re-gifted to a local organisation, we're going to leave this as it is and let them run through the setup so they know that there's absolutely nothing on this machine and in fact it's being cleaned. So all we're going to do at the moment is press and hold the power button to switch it off and then when it gets switched back on, Windows will start up um, and they'll be able to get to this screen and continue the installation. So if you found that video useful, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Just want to say thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.